We have to have a formula for global politics as the expression of our role in the world, because we'll still be the strongest of everyone, but no longer able to dominate. And I think we are kind of sliding, sliding into that very complex, elusive uh, reality in which what the public uh, perceives as being reality is nothing much more than, in most cases, a lot of slogans. Uh, and the realities are both more limiting and more elusive and more difficult to manage. The notion that we can create global order by the use of force has more limited application and has to involve, if force has to be used, much more anticipated character of the eventual resolution of the problem. It cannot be undertaken simply because there is a need for response. Uh, that is a prescription for getting involved without end as the problems breed new problems and so forth. We have to face the fact that we're now living in a world that has the United States preeminent, but not really dominant. But in the absence of American preeminence, there's a real danger that the world will simply fragment into the kind of conflicts we're seeing now in the Middle East or potentially with Russia. And we'll be missing an opportunity to exploit the fact that the primary interest of the Chinese right now is in becoming established as a successful co-leader of the world, eventually perhaps the leader. And that requires a much more sustained diplomatic effort, I think, in addition to some of the things that we're doing. It's inevitable that our perspectives are conditioned also not only by our history, but by our location. I like to look at the map when I think about such problems. And I am aware of the fact when I look at the map, I'm looking at it from my location, which on the map is America, but also in the middle. Now, if you go abroad, if you go into some foreign ministry, you look at the map, unless it's some small country which has illusions of grandeur, in most cases, it's the sort of intermediate and larger countries that dictate what is the center of the map. It was Gromyko, the foreign minister for Stalin, who once said in his memoirs that he spent a good part of one day every week sitting in front of the map, which had actually Russia in the middle and thinking about it. And you'd be amazed how many ideas you get in terms of relationships or dangers if you look at the map from the standpoint of your own interests and then of the others. The impact of geography as a, as a restraining factor has gone down, it's diminished because the outreach nowadays is infinitely greater. First, by communications, secondly, by example, and thirdly, by rapidity of travel, fourthly, by the rapid contamination even of small minorities with the passion of revenge. Geography is not only a statement concerning rivers and mountains and forests, but it's also what's in them and what's happening in them and how is that changing. Therefore, the result can be very often sudden surprise at what is happening even with close neighbors. We really do need increasingly people who have a sense and the knowledge of uh, what it means to be dealing with global complexity, uh, which cannot be parsed precisely as being of an oriental character or of a western character connected with different histories and different interests. If you're going to be actively engaged, you have to learn, among other things, how others react to what you're trying to do and what is the experience or knowledge that you're likely to apply. I'm sorry to say, but I think the American public is massively disengaged from the world in the sense that it doesn't really know very much and in a depth of what is happening in the world. Small countries threatened by this situation tend to be much better informed. I think the sense of 
the uniqueness of America while deserving of praise in terms of its ideals is also based on kind of subconscious elimination of some ugly phases, the very one-sided interpretations of what has been happening in some adjoining states where America has been very dominant. It all makes it more difficult for Americans to really understand how the world is changing and how the reallocation of shared self-respect, one might put it that way, is something that's inherent in this more interwoven, but potential also much more violent world since the tools of violence are becoming more accessible to more people. And if we're going to sustain our effort without getting then tired, peeved, and turning away from the world, I think this sort of better understanding of the interconnectivity of the world is really desirable.